Hey there, artsy friends. Welcome to my composition art journal series. This is part 37, spring. Okay, so I'm starting with a pink background. I am collecting some supplies. I'm thinking circles today, but I also like this stencil. So I'm thinking about maybe building up the background before I play with circles. Um, paint sample strips are always fun because they've already got the value scale of, of different colors, so that's fun. So I'm picking out um, some colors that kind of go with the paints that I grabbed, which are all just very spring pastel-y colors. It is the end of March here, and I am loving spring. I went to a tulip farm with my daughter a few days ago, and she is a budding photographer and just had a blast taking pictures. And so we bought some tulips that are sitting on our kitchen table and it was really neat so the first few days were really dark outside because we had a storm it was rainy and the tulips closed up and then um, now that we have some sunshine they are just like bursting open it's really cool so I started with some um, some of this lime green but I'm really not liking how it's laying on the um, on the pink um, so I'm gonna add in some of this aqua color and I'm not really cleaning off my brush all the way because I don't mind if the colors kind of blend together which um, actually I like that effect even more <clears throat> so with all my um, swabbing of my brush which this is a makeup brush by the way it's I'm using it uh, for stenciling mostly but for whatever kind of painting I need to do it's a little round tip and so I decided instead of blotting my paint on a scrap paper, I'm just gonna add blobs to my background. So then I grabbed a, an old Play-Doh lid as a, um, it's not a stencil, what do they call that? It's a masking tool, I guess you would say, so that I can create a little flower burst around. And I actually got this idea because the solar eclipse is coming up soon and my daughter wants to make some t-shirts and make little solar eclipses. And this was kind of one of the recommendations was taking like a plate on a t-shirt and um, painting around the edges to create uh, kind of the sunburst behind. Anyway, obviously different color scheme, but I'm using the same principle. And then I'm just using different size circles and I'm turning my little circles into flowers for springtime.
Since I didn't continue the stencil all the way through the background, I did want to make sure that I kind of tied it into the rest of the page so it wasn't kind of a standalone element on one side. Um, so I put a little bit at the bottom and a little bit on the other page and I think it just kind of helps bring a little bit more balance to the page. So now I'm ready to play around with these dots that I made and so I'm just kind of messing with them all over the page just to see what I like. I wasn't even sure. I got them all on the page and I actually stopped, cleared them off, rewound the, the camera to see if I even liked them or if it, went, if it made it too busy, but I decided to keep them. So um, <clears throat> I started with tacky glue and they were really curling up. And so then I switched to Mod Podge, which I think worked a little bit better. So one thing when you're working in a composition notebook journal, the paper is cheap quality. And so it bends really easy. It doesn't take a lot of weight. Um, so, which I don't mind. I've kind of accepted that from the beginning working in this journal, but it's something to keep in mind. So if you like really clean, smooth surfaces, um, a great journal uh, is to use like kids board books repurpose um, that makes everything nice and flat but I don't mind the wrinkles and the bumps so now I'm adding glitter glue to the tops of all my circles to make them sparkly one of my friends on my Facebook group Jessica Peters uses a lot of glitter on her pages and I just love how they always shine and sparkle so she kind of inspired me to think about glitter and then I'm using my metallic markers to um, outline the circles. And then I'm just gonna try to transform my little circle blobs into flowers. Let's see how I do.
So my daughter made these little tiny butterfly punch, uh, punch outs out of different paper that she was um, playing around with. And so she gave me this little bowl of butterflies and said, here go mom, you can use this on one of your pages. So I thought this was the perfect page. So I have a little bit of my daughter, her handiwork in there, these tiny little butterflies. <laughs> So I wanted to give my page a big, bold statement title. So um, since this is all about spring, I wanted to um, just write spring across the top. And so I decided to use these paint samples for to cut out each letter. And it works out nicely because they're already a specific size. So if I just cut each letter out to fit each of those rectangles, then I'll have a nice um, consistent size for, um, for my letters. Okay, this is literally how long it took me to realize that I forgot the P. <laughs> Did you guys notice right away? <laughs> probably, probably most of you were like, what is she spelling, string? <laughs> I guess this is dedicated to all the other flawed human beings out there watching because um, yeah, I excel at being flawed. <laughs> I can't laugh at myself, but I am glad that I caught it before I glued it down. I probably would have been a little sad. So for my final touches, I'm adding some more glitter glue to the top of my title and just anywhere else that I might have missed to make it extra sparkly. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really do enjoy this little hobby of mine, my little YouTube channel and my art journaling. And so I really enjoy it when I get a comment or a like or a new subscriber. Um, been doing it almost a year now and just having a lot of fun. So I appreciate you hanging out with me and I hope that you feel inspired and that you feel like it's okay to make mistakes because I'm right there with you. And I hope that you um, go make some art and come back and hang out with me again.